Yeah, you're welcome to this lecture. And I believe that we are having a time of some excitement in looking at creative writing. Well, we need to understand the fact that creative writing, just as we have been telling us, is something that is born out of the imagination. And definitely it has to do with a kind of scientific, you know, determination of getting what you want to write very much set. But then we need to also understand that creative writing deals with the society. However you look at society, you know, and to what extent we imagine society. Maybe you're talking about the little community within a clan, or you are talking about a national space, or you are talking about even an international spread. So we are dealing with society here. And when we deal with society, we are actually discussing or reflecting people. We are reflecting cultures. We are reflecting subjectivities. We are reflecting histories. We are reflecting discourses. So when we write creatively, we not only try to show our aesthetic dexterities or our imaginative span, but then we are also in the orbit of reflecting something that is very much relatable to people, relatable to their experiences, relatable to their consciousness, and also to a very great extent, you know, we try to be realistic. We know we have a number of genres in creative writing. You know, we can talk about the fantastic, we can talk about the realistic, we can talk about even the futuristic, which can be within the fantastic. We can go into a number of realms of talking about, you know, our idea of setting temporality and society. But then one thing that is very germane in writing creatively is definitely understanding the society and the history or the histories that that society might incorporate or reflect or be a part of. And along this line, many creative writers attempt and definitely get indebted, rightly indebted, into reflecting societies. But then, when we reflect such societies or happenings or things like that, we don't just imagine them. We try to study them. We try to know them. In fact, we try to be very realistic about data that have to do with dates, that have to do with a particular time frame of an happening, even particular people. And, you know, you want to also understand the meeting greetings of, let's say, the way people speak in that very society, the gender divide. We want to talk about generational reflections, politics, particularities. You also want to reflect perhaps also the relationship of the space, the ecology they inhabit with the way cultures, belief systems, you know, a language and a number of things are forged. Along that line, creative writers do something. I mean, very serious ones. You want to talk about a particular time in history, or you want to talk about certain things that have not been covered in historical data, whether in real textbooks or, you know, in journal articles or even media reflections, you know, documentaries and all that. You've got to do something. And that thing is research. Creative writers, especially those doing prose writing, okay? Creative writers often get involved in research to be able to appropriately and convincingly reflect what they are trying to say about particular happenings, particular histories, particular people, and particular cultures and how they want to inscribe a different or a particular statement concerning what they are saying. Now, research has to do with doing a thorough, you may say, refining. That's my coin, so to speak. You know, you find things, but you want to refine it. What I mean is this. You want to reinvestigate it. You want to look at certain missing links that are definitely excluded within you know, the corpus or the data or the stories that have been spoken about things. And then also, research also has to do with bringing out more things, new findings, 
In other words, you are doing certain explorations that will be very interesting. Actually, the heartbeat of any creative writing is originality. Originality and the ability to arrest the followership of the audience, to arrest and to sustain the followership, the consistent gluing of the audience to what you are saying. So how do you do that? You've got to do a number of things to achieve that. Number one, you might need to get into particular field study of what you are doing. For example, you want to look at gang politics. You want to look at gangsterism. And you are really focusing yourself on the behaviors of certain youth, street boys within a particular area and how this street mentality is somehow getting into, you know, the subcultural capital of a number of youths within that particular area. And then this development has a time that it really operates from. Let's say, for example, we are trying to trace, you know, the history and the relationships of boys involved in gangster uh, crime that interestingly try to talk about the relevance of boys in politics. Okay, they are doing their politics from the streets, but they want to actually say something legitimate about, okay, the governance of the youth within a particular nation state. And, okay, what has been being in the media has often been to chastise these boys as pariahs, you know, people that are social misfits, people that should be arrested the moment they see them and all that. But then, you have a humanistic body to talk about these boys as cases of human beings that have been relegated, that have been excluded, in fact, that have been inscribed as absent within that particular nation state, and that they have a political voice to offer the country or the community so that a very responsible administration at the national level may take this up very, very sensitively and begin to initiate programs of reorientations of recovery for this kind of human beings. And you also want to hopefully attempt a way in which this kind of boys could be so, you know, reoriented that they become assets to the society. For example, they become brand names in the area of advertisement, in the area of talking about uh, certain products, in the area of talking about certain societies, even in the area of talking about national history. How do you do that? I dare tell you, you can't just imagine that because you observe a few of them on the road some time ago and begin to do something some people mistake to be fiction, you know, and then you begin to imagine things that at the end of the day, it becomes very, you know, very, very strange and very offensive to those people that really know them. What do you do? You've got to go to their area. You've got to attempt a kind of field study. You've got to attempt, even if you can't really get there, you've got to look for data that talk about them. Maybe in writings, in reportings, or in videos that have talked about them, or perhaps also several documentaries that have looked at them. Then you might need to interact. It's got to be research. You might need to go there yourself, if you have the means, to understudy this voice, to do some deliberate interviews. You might need to know certain very important personalities about them and make some connections to do some interviews with them. You might need to listen to perspectives from not only such groups. You might need to listen to, we're talking about boys now, some street boys. You might want to listen to some girls that also somehow have relationship constant relationship with the street on daily basis maybe at sellers by the road or you know people that you know buy things along such streets or you want to listen to some motorists that ply such roads you want to listen to their landlords a number of landlords that have buildings around that area to understand what informs that kind of subculture and when you have sufficiently done that, you might also need to interact with academics who have done research in that area. You might need to go through what people have written about these people. Then you form your informed opinion about them. 
Now, when you have your own realistic data about the thematics or let's say the subject matter, the real subject matter you want to get into, now your imagination comes in. Definitely, you are not going to write the way the historian has written about these boys, okay, as just emanating from a particular historical moment in the 1960s because of a particular political development within that particular uh, country and this is why these boys have come up and all that you know historical data fine but you now want to write something that is not just talking about something general you now want to talk about this kind of phenomenon bringing in particular lives particular lived experiences you want to create characters that went through certain horrible or certain unfair treatment and you want to wear this into peculiar circumstances of family life of their personal economic power within that area okay certain other things like accidents maybe the sudden death of a particular you know breadwinner that caused some boys to find themselves going to the street and some other things like that that can be very creative you might also benefits definitely i told us we've got to be reading very well we've got to open up ourselves to writers people that have done things we want to do or people that could do things better perhaps than how you want to do it. you understudy them now you want to win your own fictional narrative into a realistic state of what you are deeming in within that kind of storyline the research makes it very very Number one, the opportunity you have in that research is that those that know about such happenings are actually able to relate with what you are saying. Number two, the interviews you have had that have allowed you to have particular personal experiences of people as instances that have not been covered within the media allow you to create very important and very original characters that are able to do a number of interesting things within the plot you are creating. Now, you also want to bring in certain instances where the politics of gender, okay, for example, these boys are definitely going to, they have been known as deviants, right? But you are trying to redeem the image of their deviants within what you are writing, while not ignoring the fact that they are deviant. Now, you might have to give some realistic portraits of particular experiences in the society, in their relationship with other people, in their relationship with governance, in their relationship with the opposite sex, in their personal subjective, you know, worlds. You want to talk about their aspirations, their future, their dreams. You want to talk about that. You also want to talk about perhaps how the dreams of some people got eventually realized, how some even died, how some never came up forever how some had to travel out of the country in fact you might even create a character that somehow finds its way out of the country a kind of migrancy obviously such people that migrate will be non-status migrants non-status migrants are people that are not documented within official records that they are traveling or they are coming out of the country to the other they don't have visas so they can't be accounted for most times such characters are going to be non-status migrants and then you somehow this person finds his way through very impossible nooks and crannies okay gets himself into the desert you know goes through the hurdles and you know and dangers and so on and so forth up or over the Sahara Desert and somehow finds himself in Italy. You might want to also subvert narratives of African or Caribbean or, you know, Arab, you know, migrants into, uh, you know, uh, you know, Western countries like Italy, like, you know, England, like um, Spain and so on and so forth, Greece and all that. You might want to subvert such narratives that demonize them and give some authentic non-reflected stories of theirs that can touch policy for example that can touch global policy national policy and all that and by the time this particular character you have made to travel remember his contemporaries are also in the country you know just doing all kinds of things and having their own 
personal experiences. By the time this one gets there, somehow, maybe you want to redeem him by making him to join and he has some talent. Maybe he has musical talent. You want to redeem him by making him to join some aspiring musicians by the roadside of the country where he gets into. Somehow, he gets accommodated, begins to rap with them, for example, and all that. And one day, a competition happens that is being nationally and it stands out. He becomes a national star within a migrant community. And therefore, his story becomes an international tale. Before you know it, he becomes celebrated. He becomes the brand of some corporate, you know, bodies within the migrant state there. As time goes on, the politics of inclusion is favorable to him within that migrant host country and then it becomes naturalized. From there, you may create a situation in which he imagines himself going back to his country and eventually goes there. And since he's an international star, interestingly, the president of his country receives it. We want to brand him, you know, here is so so and so and our uh, own. They didn't remember. In fact, they couldn't have imagined in many cases that he is one of the victims of their own wrong governance, their own clueless ways of dealing with youth, or dealing with the, you know, the slum, or dealing with the streets, okay? But this boy now begins to speak this out, and this affects policy within a particular nation state. And then, your statement of youth subculture in such a country will actually be something original. It's going to even be able, apart from gaining audience, apart from sustaining audience followership, apart from making something out of creativity and beaming you as an original writer, that story makes a statement on its own, contributes to the data of literature on youth. Let's say, for example, the African youth or the Caribbean or the Middle Eastern youth that gets into that kind of thing. And then, you know, this can also be a kind of way in which your own right of may contribute to governance, to policy making, and even who knows, you can get involved into being a particular consultant to international organizations, okay? Who knows? You just might be very important within ideas that have to do with the UNESCO, that has to do with, you know, world governance at the youth level. I'm telling us that research is something we can't ignore. Research is something that is not necessarily the way we talk about research in the academia. You've got to read some books, you've got to do things, you've got... No, research is just finding out, a kind of fact-finding, a kind of doing things in a way that is bringing new statements, new revelations about what had always been. A way of discovering things that had never actually been discovered before. I hope you are going to make a very good purchase of what has been spoken to us in this video. By the way, that kind of research will be very good for any genre, any genre at all. It will inform the way you go about writing, narrating, writing poetry, writing drama, writing your literary blog, and so on and so forth. Ladies and gentlemen, don't forget to be glued to this channel. Make sure you like it, make sure you subscribe, and make sure you share it. Thank you very much.